Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. I think this is, yeah, this is right, a fish on two legs. Test the strength of this new menace. It's not really a new menace, we've been dealing with it for quite some time, but I understand what he's saying. Alright, torches, food. Huh. Wait, why am I allowed to bring 18 food? This is short, right? Aren't I usually only allowed to bring 12? There's probably a good reason for this. Whatever. Uh, we have medicinal herbs. We want to make sure we bring at least one in case we encounter that coral. May as well bring a skeleton key. Uh, I'm trying to think. What else do I really care about? It might be a good idea to bring some laudanum. Although we are in a party that has... Actually, this party has its stress under control. I'm not worried about it. Let's bring some bandages, because the big crabs. But yeah, this is a good way to go. We're all basically set. Everybody's got their stuff reasonably upgraded. We have a lot of money. We should just go ahead and buy upgrades. We're going to need them eventually anyway. Let's, uh, let's feast while the feasting's good. So here's a question. Do I want to buy... I, I mean, I should answer the question before clicking. No, 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 I'm saving my crests. Right, I'm remembering. It's all coming back to me slowly. I'm sure some of these other abilities are, are fine and good, and we'll, you know, we'll get to using them eventually. This is not a lot of extra stress reduction. I guess the, the buff improves. It's fine. And this is this is cost upgraded all the way, yeah. That's good. I'm glad I did that. That's a major expenditure. Okay, now let's do it. We probably only need one of those. Uh bandages. I'm going to trust in our party's ability to de-stress to deal with any horrors that we run into. We don't need any blood. We've got a nice stockpile built up now. Uh, the infestation has returned. Things might get a little hairy, but... At least we are prepared. We have a little bit of a stockpile, which means that we can have a couple of weeks where things go real wrong with our blood count and still be okay. I have to say, I'm not looking forward to having to fight even higher level versions of the Bloodsuckers. And I'm sure it gets much worse from here. These salt-soaked caverns are teeming with pelagic nightmares. They must be flushed out. Oh. Uh, we should probably reassign his stuff a little bit. So am I right to have him in front? I wonder if it would be better to have the flagellant in front. Neither one of them, this isn't really a case like the bounty hunter, neither one of these guys is any good from the third row. I suppose it does make more sense to have the flagellant in front, because at least third row crusader can use his stress heal. Alright, well, these guys certainly do bleed. I guess we'll start working this one so that we can combine the damage with Abyssal Artillery. Not that it's necessary. Hey, he even crit the right one. So I think Predigestion can't spread the Plague, or the Crimson Curse, but basically everything else they do can. I thought maybe there was a small, a small chance that we could max damage crit and just blow the guy out in one turn. Alright, glad we upgraded the bleed. Hmm. I mean, they do have dodge. These guys have two speed, and you have two speed as well. 
I'd really like to get a zealous accusation and kill both of them by uh, loading this guy up with damage, but let's not get cute, huh? Let's make sure that things are actually dying. The more enemies that are alive, the more uh, the more attacks we will receive. Decimated. Hey, there you go. That's what I was talking about. Except in that case, I actually didn't want it to happen. It's kind of hoping we get another turn, you know, do some de-stressing. Or is it merely a trick of the light? Okay, that's good news. We're gonna try to take this guy out quickly. This gives a three-point bleed. I mean... We don't really have a lot of ways of targeting the guy in the back row. This party has that same problem that the last party had. So maybe this is worth doing. Ah! That sucks. Alright, he's bleeding pretty good. There's a chance we kill the stinger straight up, and I think I'm going to go for it because I really, really don't want to get stunned. Man! These dudes are using some punk-ass magic if you can just kind of like step to the side and not be affected. It's no magic missile, I'll say that. Okay, so the enemy's turn went pretty well for them. And then that dude just hard missed. Alright, unfortunately this dude's still alive, but... Now that he's in the third row, I don't feel as great a need to go after him with the flagellant because the uh, the jester can hit him now. I think this is probably a good time for a redeem. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Do I want to do this, or do I just want to stress heal? You know, it's important this guy not get his turn. He can cause more stress on his turn than we would heal with our heal. Alright, there we go. That feels pretty good. And now we're actually going to get a little bit more time even. Ah, uh, that guy has a lethal bleed on him. Not as much time as I would have liked. Hey, you. I'm pretty sure you can use your shovels to pry those things open and be guaranteed better loot, but obviously I'm not going to go dropping my shovel this early in the adventure. Certainly an argument for bringing more shovels, though. I probably don't want to let him have a turn, right? But th this will be a good opportunity for the Jester to use his attack that hits the middle, too, for dramatically decreased damage. Ah, there we go. And this guy will get his one swing in, and then he's done for. <coughs> well, okay, not bad, guys. Do I just go for crit heals? I mean, like, the dude has dodge. I guess let's see if we can remove his dodge. The slow death. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. Now we can definitely afford to do a little bit of de-stressing here. I think this dude is under control, probably. In fact, this party is basically immune to stress. 
Also, we come with a lot of our own lighting. Before every battle, we're dashing around, setting up ring lights and stuff. No, 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 hold on just a second, guys. We're almost ready. Alright, I like a whole stack of crests. Hey, it was the sparkle of coin. How did you see that through the backpack? Does Boosie have x-ray vision? As far as superpowers go, that's like... That is like a second tier superpower. That's not bad. Ah, oh, that's a lot of traps. Jesters are good with traps, right? Ah, uh, well... Good, not great, I would say. Eh, alright, you got the job done. So, the complete 100% of room battles missions have extremely variable time, or uh, length, rather. Wow. Not quite good enough, but pretty good. Alright, I believe in you, Boosie. Just hit this dude like a truck. That's not quite lethal. Then again, I'm really not that worried about the blue fish guys in the front two rows, because they can only use an attack that can only target the front two guys in my party. And both of these guys are so tough that it may not even, you know, the attack may as well not even connect. So the Jester would have to jump forward to target the guy in front. I think he's just going to play him uh, play him a little song. Do we have at this guy or do we start the bleed? I think I think let's go for uh, trying to connect the bleed here. Cuz there's a pretty good chance, right, that uh that the Eldritch, the Abyssal Artillery, fails to even connect. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. Well, at least I mean, there's no way we're gonna have to pay for a bunch of these dresses, right? This is how a life. Come on, no crit. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm being too hard on it, but I think X-Ray Vision is definitely like a, a tier 2 superpower. It's like a pretty good one, but it's no super strength. Or heat vision. Listen, if you gotta have some kind of crazy vision, might I recommend heat vision? Think of all the time you could save. Also, Heat Vision probably... I bet there's some there's some BS way you could come up with for that to basically function as a flight power as well. A decisive bubbling. You know, some like, some like mid-90s Flash comics era writing. No offense to anybody who's into the Flash or anything, but... Some of the stuff that the, the Flash type, the speedster characters are able to do because, eh, you know, if you, like, vibrated fast enough, you could, you know. That gets real silly, even, like, even comic books relative, that gets real silly. <laughs> Don't even get me started on the speed force. Alright, you're dead, right? Yeah, so I guess we just bonk this dude. I mean, probably we stun him, right? Stunning him makes it a lot less likely that he's going to get a turn before he dies. And then, now that he's stunned... Do I want to just bleed both of these guys? Because the next Abyssal Artillery... The ground quakes. Yeah, the next Abyssal Artillery might make that lethal on both of them. Okay, it did not. He gets one more turn. That's fine. We'll let him have his one more turn. 
You're already out. We don't really need the de-stressing. See, this is uh, this is where I have a little bit of trouble with the jester. Is that once, if your stress is under control, you, it's really easy to get into situations where he can't really contribute. But I think the problem here really is just that he doesn't he doesn't slot easily into all lineups. You really need a lineup where the other people also have some mobility stuff, and you can you know you can correct for the situations where he knocks somebody out of position. I wish he had a heal, just a normal heal. You're not quite under half. That's very frustrating. Alright, good. I was hoping that that would not be a kill. So you're missing 20 health. I'm gonna give it to the Jester. The Crusaders miss a lot of health, but also he still has a lot of health. Because he just has a huge... Wow, that's a lot of money. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. Um, because he just has a huge amount of base health. I think at this point I'm going to drop the holy water. I mean, I'm not going to drop the holy water. Somebody's going to drink it. It'll be... The Occultist. I don't even remember what I was talking about. I'm pretty sure I was back on... Sort of back on topic. We're done with... <laughs> we're done with the derail about the speed force, I promise. Alright, so this guy could really cause a problem. If he successfully spearfishes somebody out of position... Okay, we overkilled him because I know I'm going to use abyssal artillery as well, but better safe than sorry. Destroy. And Boosie just one-shots people. He just hits them for 100% health all the time. No big deal. No, we do not have a huge number of stuns, unfortunately. I think he's low enough that he should be able to use his own, uh, his own heal. This guy's getting more than he bargained for when he put up that guard. Okay, well that wasn't very effective. But you know what I mean. We have a lot of we have a lot of stuff that we're doing that is effective. So he's bleeding for 16, which means he still has a turn left. We might be able to get enough bleed onto him that that's no longer true. I'm certainly going to do this so that I can actually hit both parties. Okay, we got it. Now what, smart guy? That was not very impressive. Also, how are you getting so much, uh, so much stress, man? Calm down. You know what? The, the flagellants got this. In radiance, may we find victory. See, I told you. Wow, the quality of the loot in this dungeon has been spectacular. So I have no idea if I'm done yet or not. I think we're gonna end up not needing these medicinal herbs. So let's take the sapphire, and then this is a tarnished charm, so it's worth 750. What in my inventory is worth less than 750 to me? Honestly, I, I think the bandages at this point. I can use our key on this. Glittering gold. That was less impressive. Paid for in blood. Hey, look, Curio to use our medicinal herbs on the very moment we discard them.
they tried to prevent us from being able to attack this guy by stunning everybody who's not the Crusader. They have not been successful. Obliterated. I know that some enemies have targeting priorities that are based on your current health levels relative to each other or like how much stress you have. I wonder if there's an enemy targeting parameter for the stuff you have equipped. Like, or the, the skills you have. I guess equipped is still the word I want. Right, like it would be interesting if there were creatures who specifically targeted people who had stuns. Things like that. Ghoulish horrors brought low and hmm. driven into the mud. I think we're gonna have to let one portrait go. Also, I don't know how I ended up with this many uh, torches still. Well, hopefully this is the last room. Hmm. I don't particularly need busts, but this is quite a few. There could still be a blockage in this tunnel. I really don't feel good dropping the shovel. Maybe we torch up and drop the light? The way is lit. The path is clear. We require only the strength to follow it. Yeah, maybe that was the right thing to do. I don't know. This is terrible. So, does it make sense for me to do this? If I move back to here, it's going to move him forward. If I move to the very back, it gets us a little closer to our proper order. Come on, stick the bleed. Alright. Oh, please let this pull him. Oh, <laughs> I wish I could elect not to resist. Okay, Tidal Slam's not so bad. And in fact, it fixed our party order, so that's cool. So what are we at? We are at 160% chance to stun. There is a 90% chance of this working. Well, you know, the thing about... <clears throat> the number one most important thing to know about the number 90 uh, is that it is not the number 100. Unfortunately for us. Yeah, let's make sure this guy goes down. Not give him his extra turn. Confluence of skill and purpose. Damn it. Perhaps there's that eight damage per round bleed. This might be the last battle. It's hard to know. Here's a little bit of dodge. Nobody has any moves that benefit from the mark. I'm just gonna... Man, must you... Must you add to our misery? No, seriously. Get stunned. Alright. We do not have a fancy strategy. Stacking up the uh, the bleed resist penalties enough now. I'm just gonna keep healing Pussy and keep stacking more bleeds onto him. He's at 110 now. We still have a 50% chance to land the stun. I'm gonna go for it because Pussy's normal hits are not gonna be particularly powerful against a guy with 50% prod. Attacking with the bleeds makes a little bit more sense, especially now that we've got its resistance down quite a bit. Alright, can I do five? I can do five. Okay, he's dead. Prodigious size alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade.
Okay, so we don't particularly need to go down there. As the question is, do I think that curio will be worth holding on to our stack of food? Actually, the answer is no. Let's let's get out of here. All right, a pretty successful mission. Nobody needs to be de-stressed. Everything went pretty smoothly. And all we have to do now is another one of those. Not bad. Twelve crests is a start. Unfortunately, we're going to need a heck of a lot more than that. So, Thin-Blooded is not a big deal. Armor Tinker is pretty great if you can get it before you spend all your money, uh, before you buy all your upgrades. Lazy Eye is not a big deal for him. Spasm of the Entrails is one I'm not 100% sure I've seen before. Okay, Fangophobia's gotta go. Fangophobia's gotta go, like, now. There is a great horror beneath the manor. A crawling chaos that must be destroyed. Yeah, that's a bummer, but... Is there a positive thing I want to lock in at the same time? Not really. Hmm... No, not for 10,000 money. Okay, he just has rabies. Who was it who got the other really ugly disease? Okay. So, Cheney, you definitely need a little bit of assistance. And Moyon also just has rabies? Yeah, that's fine. Alright, what next? We have revealed a new boss, the Alluring Siren. This is an okay trinket. We have access to the hag. This is uh, something that we already have, obviously. We can go get a moon cloak. Or a or suffering's collar. Wow, that seems... That seems really bad, right? Some of the time you will have some resistance, which means that some of the time you will not get... Uh, tagged when you would get tagged. Ooh. Brawler's gloves are compelling. Once again, the only green mission available to us is the boss fight. We might go after those brawler's gloves. Hmm. Of these people, who fits into our low-level party the best? We probably don't need, actually, uh, another frontliner. We probably don't need another healer. But we also probably don't need another bounty hunter, right? Like, we have two, I guess. But still, two's enough. I'm looking for more, like, plague doctors and stuff. Stuff we only have one of, really. Another man-at-arms wouldn't go amiss either, even though I am pretty full up on frontliners down at the bottom end. Oh, I didn't read the, the message here. Cavalier went on a drunken bender and hasn't been seen. That's fine. That's fine, I don't care about that. Well, so the game's not offering us a short anywhere. We go after some mustache cream. Nah, I, let's go for Brawler's Gloves. Brawler's Gloves are pretty good. I don't know if Fresh Air in the Tunnels does, but it's probably fine. Actually, everybody we have at this level is now level 4, though, and I kind of want them to be boss fighters. Should we go to the ruins just to, like, I don't even like this. All Saints Day is not a great event. Hmm. Well, maybe we go boss fighting. Right, like, this this reward of 18 crests is relevant to us, and the restraining padlock's not a terrible item. The siren's not that difficult of an enemy. Yeah, what the heck. Let's just audible into a boss fight after our short. Actually, it's already been 30 minutes. Hmm. Okay, I'll tell you what. I know this is an unusually short episode, but it's going to turn into an hour and a half if I go do a boss fight, at least potentially. So we are going to call it here. Actually, you know, we could do this. 
Let's tack this onto the end here. Let's get just get some XP on our people. So I do want to get the Antiquarian moving up a little bit. Uh, let's grab you and you and you. What is her optimal position? Okay, all the stuff that she has here is stuff that she can do from the back. So actually, let's do this. All right, you're pretty ready to go. You're pretty ready to go. You're pretty ready to go. We could go ahead and give these guys a little bit of a push, though. Actually, is that... That's not really that true. All right, we can upgrade his stuff. Oh, wait, why is, why is Herbert in the party? Hold on. This shouldn't be Herbert. It should be Fairfax. In which case, I guess this. So what? Are, what what's your deal? Nervous Stab is just a low damage attack. Get Down is a dodge and speed buff for herself. Invid invigorating Vapors is a buff for somebody else. It says buff target, but it, the game doesn't do a great job of expressing whether your friendly abilities are targeted or not. Like, this might be everybody. Because a number of the abilities that say, that do something to everybody. Um, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe they changed it. Oh no, I know Battle Ballad definitely is a thing that affects the whole party. So yeah. Uh, let's rearrange here. We could instead pick up the world's tiniest blight. An accuracy debuff for enemies, but a very small one. Or a heal. Well, to be perfectly honest, her heal is probably a lot better than buffing herself. The heal can at least get somebody off death's door, right? So yeah, the antiquarian skills are real bad. That's okay, that's not the reason you bring her. Alright, you have the skills I want from you. You, we may as well level you up, level your stuff up. And then, uh, most of these people are level zero, so they can't have any upgrades. Maybe it's not a great idea to go into the courtyard at level zero, even in a green, but... Yeah, we'll be fine. Alright, let's do a little bit of equipping for the same reasons I always only want to do a little bit of equipping. We give him plus 15% damage at basically no cost, or we give him slightly more damage at a significant cost. That's a tough one, right? He has his self-heal. He does also have a self-destressor. I guess we'll keep the... You know what? He's not that likely to need to be healed. We have a lot of healing in our party. I'm going to swap his heal out with his mark and de-stress self ability. I believe that we will not need the self-healing that much. So let's just give... Uh, Let's just give everybody one item. I'm going to give the Sun Ring to the Leper, because the Leper really does get a lot of value out of the accuracy, having his unusually low base accuracy. So everybody gets one trinket. Jeez, I don't even know what to give her. If we still had a scouting book, this would be a good place for it. I guess I'll just leave her inventory open so that she can pick up more loot. Or we could give her a stress book. And she has base accuracy and no ability to, uh, you know, no improvements from gear or anything, so maybe this is a good idea. And then we'll leave a trinket slot open on everybody for carrying more loot. There's a possibility that what's going to happen here is I'm going to end up getting the Crimson Curse. 
Uh, let's bring some shovels, because we know this place loves shovels. Sure, a key. A bandage. This is the green version, so I don't anticipate it being terribly dangerous. Maybe that's unfair. But, I mean, I doubt we'll even see the variety of enemies we were seeing in the Baron missions down here at green. It says activate three mind, uh, winemakers reserves. Ancient traps lie in wait. Unsprung and thirsting for blood. This trap cannot be that ancient. So yeah, we're going to start getting the Crimson Curse again, but it's okay. We have a blood supply built up, and we're going to get even more. Oh, I have to... She has not the right skills for the position of the party she's in. That's fine. We can move her up here, and she'll be at least able to use Illumination. Um, I guess for now, that's really the only thing for her to do. Okay, you can contribute. You did one less damage than would have been lethal. So now the leper has to kick in. I was hoping the leper was going to be able to use his turn to just chop this guy in half. Alright, so this is one of the uh, one of the things you can find when you bring an antiquarian along. We're going to want to have the antiquarian interact with as many of these curios as possible. So, if I use the shovel, it breaks it apart and gives me camp uh, firewood, right? But I don't think I actually want firewood. Let's see here. She does have her get me a free trinket ability, so firewood would effectively be a trinket. It also would allow us to probably apply some de-stress before we set, uh, head home. Just, you know, take it and hold on to it. But... I think we might be better off saving our shovel for something else. There's there's a lot of loot curios that can be interacted with with a shovel. She got the curse. Nope, oh, she's got spasming entrails. That's fine. I'm not worried about that. Oh, we bought these torches for a reason. We should be using them. Okay, pretty good. Is this... No, this is not the quest version. Man! I'm sure that those can occasionally give you actual loot. Alright, I've had enough of these vampire dudes. Let's try to minimize the number of curses we pick up here. Alright, and him dodging means that he will die. So, her ability here that forces a guard from an ally can be pretty useful uh, if you have a repostor in your party. We do not, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm a little bummed out about how much the leper is having to just finish people off. Such a terrible assault cannot be left unanswered. It'd be cool if we took advantage of his big giant crits to uh to exterminate enemies that are at fall more often. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. Alright, well, just by being here, the antiquarian has already earned us a thousand gold. So, not too bad. Ah. Uh, an elderly but shunned member of this damned court. Is this the name that the guys in the robes had before? Oh, let's give him a bit of blood. Oh. And, what I tell you. Sweet trinkets. Unfortunately, all class specific and none of them equipable. <laughs> so... That is the quest item. Wealth beyond measure. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. 
All right, I think there's a pretty good chance that we're going to, uh, unfortunately, contract some Crimson Curse here. Okay, that's... Yeah, we'll just give this guy a little tap. Wow, apparently the, li the littlest of taps, but that was all that was needed. I don't think they realize quite who they're messing with. That's probably not the person they want to be attacking. Man. Their formation is broken. Maintain the did that put me below half? It did. Yeah, the flagellant seems very good. He seems like a very good class. This expedition at least promises success. Uh, the... Bandages, probably. Right? What are the odds that we're going to get any use out of these? We also just need to find one more wine or winemaker's reserves, but unfortunately, uh, does anybody really need this? I guess you can take it. I forgot what I was saying. That seems to be very easy for me to do as I get on in years. I'm an ancient 30 something. I feel ancient, actually. Did we. I just dropped my holy water. <laughs> well, then, never mind. Man, I was really hoping to get a scout so that we wouldn't have to worry about this hallway. You know, we don't know all the things that can happen when you drink from this. Hey, you. Okay, that works too. Hmm, probably not going to need these medicinal herbs. Is that the quest item or is that... Okay, cool. Well, this was easy enough. Waiting to be spent. Uh, I don't know that we want to bail out right away. There's still treasure to be had. I guess it's probably... It's probably the key. We don't find that many things that require keys. Spring to life. Hmm. The singular purpose. Yeah, that's not great. Get him with your tiny. What is it? A kukri? Get him with your tiny, whatever kind of sword that is. Here we go. Actual damage dealers. Sort of dealing actual damage. It's probably better for her to take this opportunity just to get the leper in front. Actually, she should have stepped back twice and brought the Vestal up. Well, we don't really need the healing. I'm mostly doing this to uh, fish for crits. So clearly and oh, and that's right. Then I want these guys. Or is it merely a trick of the light? Come on, chest full of incredibly valuable sapphires. Just full to the brim with them. Now ah, this is going to be an annoying fight. Wow, they're just... Okay. One of them did not target him. I'm glad I took his de-stress. Ah. Alright. 
we can do this. Because the vessel's attack is destroyed. Not that powerful, uh at least that attack is not that powerful under the best of situations. So I felt it was confident it would leave him to bleed. On, get him below half. Oh no, they stopped just short. Well, that's unfortunate. So you have seven health left. Probably dude's gonna have to hit him either way. So maybe I should throw out another... Well, this does debuff the enemy dodge. You know what? Never mind. You have to hit with the thing that debuffs enemy dodge in order for it to do the thing that it says it does on the tip. It seems like the leper's job is uh, considerably easier. Alright. Inspiration and improvement. We're gonna have to make sure that we use his de stress ability a number of times. I think we could probably drop the shovels at this point. Hmm. It could also be the torches. You know what? Let's use a torch and then... Aha! A shovel curio. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, I will absolutely drop a shovel for eight more crests. Alright, let's hope we get one more... One more scout when we get into this room. Because that could really inform what we want to do next. Whether it's worth it to just bail out of here. We did not get a scout. Well, I guess let's go to the other room. Uh, we're definitely having some stress problems. Here, you search this. Okay, well that was filthy. Why isn't anybody wearing gloves? Alright, dude's craving. I'm gonna let him... I'm gonna let him just crave. Alright, so we're gonna start pe seeing people get vampired again, but we've done a good job of preparing for it. We have a lot of blood now. We didn't end up making that much money there, but we made a lot more money thanks to the Antiquarian than we would have otherwise. And we got some decent um, heirloom rewards. Got enough XP to make most of these people into real adventurers. Kleptomaniac's gonna have to go. Especially on an antiquarian whose whole job is to sort of fix our cash flow problems. You answered the letter. Now, like me, you are a part of this place. So she also has a disease I'd like to get dealt with, but one thing at a time. Everybody who has really crappy diseases is getting treatment, right? Yeah, okay. Excuse me. Let's pop in the stagecoach real fast. Yep, definitely taking the raw strength Vataville. of the he spent, but his eyes hold the secrets of a hundred campaigns. Uh we probably, like I said, don't need third bounty hunter. Another soul battered and broken, cast aside like a spent torch. Indeed. Okay. Another book of sanity. Another focus ring. Focus ring's nice. The martyr's seal, which is not great, but you could probably do a silly thing with the uh, with the antiquarian in this. Ah, that is the wrong incense. So what do we want to do? We have a lot of options here. At some point we're going to have to just get this done. Do we have level 2s? No, we don't. Sort by actual level here. Not that we couldn't take the boss at level 1. But why do it when you can wait, right? Hmm... You know what? Actually, I have no idea. I have no idea what we're going to do next. Huh. 
sculptor's tools. I just have no idea what they're for. It might be... Hmm. Might be the case that we go after the focus ring. Focus rings are broadly useful. Um, this mission has a lot of crests as a reward. The siren's not a terribly difficult boss. Yeah. Yeah, I think let's do this. So, let's grab a boss fighting team. This is a really nice place for an occultist since he has so many uh, bonus damage versus, versus eldritch attacks. Let's do like a third row occultist with an arbalest backing him up. And for the front line, maybe Boosie? We, have, we actually have like, well, we have actual front liners this time. Or at least one. Yeah, sure. Dude's been getting a workout lately. It's nice to have a crusader around, though. Now, let's make sure that we're reasonably upgraded. I want him to be in the second slot. Right? We actually have kind of a lot of guys who want to be in the second slot coming up the pipe. Maybe I should put... Hmm, maybe I should take him out and put in, like, Vaughn? Oh, no, we have... That's right. We have a religious frontliner. We could bring Moy on. I don't necessarily want to bring a bleed-focused guy to the cove. I mean, we just got away with doing it, but it's not great practice. I'm just thinking that looking at all of our party members, we have a lot of people who would like to be in the second row and not that many people who would like to be in the third. So maybe it's a good idea to give the uh, the Houndmaster a rest and let him be the third position in some other party. Uh, but, you know, he's got Blackjack. He's We'll be fine. We'll figure it out. We'll figure out our weird party compositions when we, uh, when we get to that. So everybody's already got all their gear. Let's just slap some trinkets on them. So first things first, this dude, I think, honestly, I might go with the Paralyzer's Crest and Sun Ring, maybe? Then for you, Accuracy and Spiked Collar. That's some pretty good damage. Sacrificial Cauldron. Boy, I sure wish I still had my Eldritch Killing Incense. Um, I don't think... Actually, you know what? Since he's so slow anyway, why don't we why don't we give him a legendary bracer? We'll give you the plus accuracy cuz your base accuracy is not amazing. And you have rabies. And then you can have like Dismas's head and steady bracer or Yeah, steady bracer I think. Man, I don't think we've seen uh, we've seen her class-specific orange quality trinket at all. We could give her the Eldritch Slayer's Ring, and that would give her bonus damage against a lot of the things in the cove, but not everything. We still run into bandits. We still run into uh, human enemies. Um, that's the same thing. <laughs> and also bloodsuckers. There's bloodsuckers to worry about. So I'm not. I don't think I'm going to put this on her. This is maybe kind of a high-stress loadout, but we do have a stress healer. Yeah. Okay, this will be fine. So, that's going to be it for today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you're all still enjoying the series as much as I'm enjoying making it. I gotta be honest with you. Sometimes it's very difficult not to just binge Darkest Dungeon recordings. But I, uh, I like to not get too far ahead so that if people have concerns or there are technical issues or stuff, I can, you know, resolve them quickly. Um, but... Like I said, that's it for today. Come back next time. We're headed into the cove to fight the alluring siren and probably, my guess is, get our third blueprint that we will have absolutely no immediate use for. And we'll see you then.